did I put the disks with the npp 3.0 save file? Now it may sound weird that I still have these on floppy disks, but that just for security. The, in the junk pile, uh, I don't see them. Uh, that's the school thing, that they should be there. And uh, yeah, here they are. Okay, so let's head back to the <laughs> Let's head back to the PC, I guess, and let me show you the actual game. So here we actually are in the game that I was talking about. As you can see, the ground is actually a bit low. The reason for that is that I didn't like how the old NPP had the ground basically as a part, it was a brick and since the Roblox terrain thing looks actually quite nice I decided I want to use it the reason this is a bit low is because I didn't. I also don't want the ground to be just this flat I want to actually have some little hills and su such so this is basically the lowest that the ground can actually get later on as you can see only this part of the actual building is rebuilt the other ones will mostly not exist. This reactor building will actually be right there. This is the part that will actually connect to it. The storage building will also not exist. It will totally be destroyed. Um, this water tower, I think it will still, I will still keep it. The bunker will of course stay. And the main business building, that will be actually integrated into the main plant. As you can see, it will have actually three, three floors. That's the underground, the first floor, and the second one. So let's actually go inside. Uh, not all of the first floor is done, as I said, but some things are. This area here is still under actually development, heavy development. Uh, these things, of course, work as they did. As you can see, I actually kind of remade the thing that actually dispenses your the fire extinguishers. This is the emergency generator room, and the generator is fully scripted, and it actually works a bit better than the old one did. So there, the doors of course work, and there are no free models in the new plant, so I hope that's an improvement. All these little details, and of course, brand new lights that emulate these kind of fluorescent ones okay so as i said the generator is scripted it works and it does like so there we go and it's active now it's producing power as you can see it says you do not enter, it actually won't do anything if you go here, it's just a little detail. That's the fuel tank if you're wondering, and these wires go into the integrated fuel pump inside. <clears throat> of course, all this is kind of realistic. As you can see, we have four actual stages, states the generator can be in. The error light, because you're probably wondering. This lights up when the generator was running and it ran out of fuel or there is also a 2% chance that it will just fail to start up. I lowered this quite a bit because as I also experienced by myself, the generator on the fusion reactor test facility was kind of annoying because it f actually stopped working all the time. It failed to start up multiple times, that of course is the fuel indicator. We have 24 gallons, 28 gallons, I think. And that's how much the fuel is left. The amount of these wires actually is nice, is a nice little detail. It's not random, it all makes sense. That's the main wire that the L's, the rest shorts to. So that's the actual running state. And these are the five binary lines needed to control this. Yeah, that's a, that's a, actually quite a nice detail, I think. And we, if we switch this off, this is how it looks. 
and we can come inside once again. The generator is quiet as you can see and of course doesn't generate any electricity. I will actually leave this on so that you can see how the fuel, how it looks when it runs out of fuel. So there. And this is a little decal I made, it's similar to the one on the Fusion place. It just has some shading added. Now that's how the direction panel looks like. And this section is practically almost done. As you can see the plant has no roof yet. That's because it will be added later. So that's the main hole of the water processing area and steam processing area. Mm, the label is not added yet. Here we have just some posters from the previous games and some more in the break room, which I will show you in a second. These are the steam condensers. This is actually the part that in real power plants converts steam back into water extremely fast in very high quantities. Uh, once again, the amount of pipes and everything, it all makes sense. That's how much actually I care about the realism of my games. These valves will be changed as one of the people in our group offered me to build some stuff, some little models as he's an excellent builder. So I agreed and yeah, his new models look pretty awesome. I won't tell you the name because I forgot. <laughs> but yeah, this will be replaced and this will be used to shut off the water coming through and that will rise the pressure. Here's just some spill. And as you can see our old friend from the fusion place is once again here, although it's a little different, but I won't show you it now. There we go. These are the second uh, cycle water pumps. These are not the pumps that actually pump the water going through the reactor core. What they do, that's the cycle that pushes water through the condensers and the steam separators is the second water cycle. And that's actually the water that turns into steam. So yeah, it's separate. If you actually want to learn more about it and you actually know Polish or understand it, then I actually made a video all about nuclear power some time ago. As you can click it here. Uh, this is a little kind of elevated thing. I forgot the word that you can go uh, now. The there. In the past, there actually were steam condenser, steam separators here, but Mike, which is my realism checker, told me that the steam separators should actually be near the reactor core as it goes for the MB, um, RMBK reactor type. I hope I, that was the correct one. So as you can see, the steam, uh, steam separators are just moved here. That's how they look. If I head back to the plant, Mike proposed me to make a break room here instead. So I did, and that's what it says right here, break room. It's a little lounge basically for workers. This pipe is still from the time where, when the steam condensers were here, but I left it there because it would be a crap ton of work because that's not a single model. These are all different parts. There I made some tables, as I said, no free models, I built everything that you can see here. And I also added some posters. This you are probably familiar with. This if you are on our Atom Discord, which I suggest you to join, then you've probably also seen this one. And since we're allies with Pinewood, I also decided to put this one up. And then some odd ones there too. So I showed you that, I also showed this. As you can see, the old part of the plant still hangs here. Now the things that are to be done, there will be the main actually turbine hole. It will spread from here to there. Here will be actually entry to the reactor hall, or the section of the reactor hall, because this will not only be the actual place where the reactor sits, but also, as I said, the uh, first cycle water pumps, which are, which are the ones that actually pump the water through the reactor core. You hear this noise? That's the generator screaming. 
And if I come inside, as I promised, I will show you what happens with a lot of fuel. Well, this happens, the arrow light flashes, the generator is offline, and I can't do anything about it. So that's how it looks. Uh, this door here, this kind of, um, I would say, industrial class one, was actually here because I had an idea that you could actually drive a tanker inside here and refuel the diesel. Mike told me to raise that idea, but I think I would still add it either way. Okay, what else didn't I show you? Ah, the layout of the underground is done, although as you can see there is no floor yet and no nothing, basically there's nothing here. That would be the main hall. Uh, this is the underground of the turbine hall. Here would be the bottom of the turbines and some piping stuff. Here I forgot how you get there. Oh, so this area is, as you can see, not yet connected because I was too lazy. <laughs> but what was meant to be here, this is the place that the first psych water pumps were supposed to be, because Mike told me so, and now he refuses to tell that, that he actually did. But instead, I don't know what's going to be here, but probably also some kind of plumbing. And here is the place where the emergency water tank, which is this thing, will be. In case you don't know what this is, in real, actually, nuclear power plants with a class 3 reactor in inside. In case the, the plant is on a total blackout, then there's no possible reason to pump the water, no possible way to pump the water into the core. You can release the, uh, this valve and this one, and what it does, it basically uses gravity to your advantage to naturally circulate the water inside the reactor. So that's how it works, and if anyone doesn't know how the melted down reactor looks like, well, here it is. And as you can see, the blown up reactor and the normal reactor in the old plant are all in the same place they just go transparent or once again visible to show them that's how it works uh, the cafeteria will be here probably this pieces they these pieces weren't anchored that's the reason they fell and that's pretty much it i have really nothing more to show you and yes the smoke does come out of this smokestack you probably say when the generator is running so yeah, that's the whole of the plant, only the generator is lit right now, and I hope that will make you a little bit more patient with how the plant, what, with when the plant is actually going to be released, so yeah, bye.